Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I have a commission to make a small end table. It needs to be made out of oak and copper. So first I bought these strips of oak that I'm just going to break down to the right lengths to make the legs. I don't buy a lot of wood like this, but getting it in three dimension sizes does make life a lot easier. The legs are going to be made out of four pieces joined together with a corner bridle joint. First thing I need to do is change out the blade for my flat toothed one. A link to the blade I use and all the other tools I use is under the video. With that done, I can set the height of the blade to the width of the oak. Now I made a tenoning jig a few weeks ago to make my panels for my doors. Now it's going to get its second outing, cutting the mortises and tenons for this joint. First I'm going to cut the mortise. So I get a bit of wood clamped in place and pass it through. I was extremely impressed how this battery powered saw performed in this. This is a 5mm thick blade going quite high through some oak and it did it no problem whatsoever. With the first cut done I can then flip it round, clamp it back in place, pass it through again and that is the mortise cut. Now to cut the tenon, the fence needs moving towards the blade, the thickness of the blade, so about 5mm. What I did is rip some pine down to the dimensions of this oak and had a few test cuts first. And when I got the two pieces fitting together nicely, then I could cut the tenon. So with the fence moved over about 5mm, it's just a case of one pass on one side, flip over, and then a pass on the second side. The shoulders just needed a little clean up, so I just used some sandpaper and a sanding block for that. Then I got a small chisel and did a little bit of clean up on the mortise, but it wasn't bad. The flat tooth blade leaves a pretty good finish. I can now start to get the legs glued up. So I just apply some PVA to the shoulders of the tenons and get a little brush just to brush it around a little. I probably didn't need to explain what I was doing with a brush. Anyway, with the glue brushed around a little, I can slide the two bits together. This was my first go doing this joint and I was quite pleased with how everything went together. Nice and snug and a nice result is it pulls everything perfectly square. I mean this joint is completely overkill for a table this size, but I think it looks interesting. And I'm actually going to come back later and reinforce this joint, but only for the aesthetic detail of that. I got two of these leg assemblies put together, clamped up and then I left them to dry. While it was all drying I got on with the table top. The top is going to be a tray style and it's going to have four mitered corners. I started cutting out the pieces on the mitre saw. It's going to need a rebate in the bottom for the base, but I decided to do that afterwards as it means I can get it cut out without resetting up the saw. If you have a rebate, like in a picture frame, you have to cut 145, then set the saw up for the second 45, and then again and again, and you have a little waste piece in between. This way, you can just flip the workpiece over and keep making cuts with no wastage. I thought I was being very clever. And I left that overnight to dry in the wolf crawl off clamps. Then with a bearing guided bit, I could run it around and start cutting out the rebate. I started with a cut of just a few mil and this worked really well. Then I could raise the bit up to the height of what they wanted the base to be and then I could make a much more aggressive cut. This was not such a good idea. As you can see, I'm getting quite a lot of chip out and wait for it. That was me jumping back and I elbowed the camera. Both me and the camera were fine, but I think I learnt my lesson. And instead of making the same mistake twice, we're going to go about this in a different way. I'm going to do what I probably should have done in the first place and cut the rebate out first using the table saw. First I set the blade to the height I wanted the base to be and I could cut along. Then I flip the piece over and I'm just going to cut out that little bit of waste. I probably could have set up a sacrificial fence and used that flat tooth blade, but I've actually just swapped back to the normal blade. So now I can cut out the 45s again. This time I've just got to swap between 45s between cuts. That really didn't take that long, 
and it's a lot better than getting sucked into the spinny router of death. Get it all clamped up again, and this time I'm using my Veritas clamps because I'd forgotten I had them before, and they do a really good job of pulling everything square. While I waited for that to dry, I could cut out the base. So this is some 12mm MDF I'm cutting down for that. The MDF is just going to slide into that rebate we cut. Nice snug fit, I might shave a little more off. And it's recessed about a mil more than it needs to be to accommodate the copper that's going in there. When the glue had dried on the legs, I could come back and reinforce the corners. It's not that the joints need reinforcing, I'm pretty sure I could hang off these, they're incredibly strong. But it's just to add a little bit of copper detail to them. So I'm marking out the centre of each joint in all four corners, and then I'm going to drill through with an 8mm bit. While I'm all set up for drilling, I'm also going to measure the center of the bottom of both of these legs. I can then drill through that mark, but this time with a 10mm bit. I've got some 8mm copper rod that I'm just going to cut down about 1mm wider than the legs themselves. I can then mix up a little batch of epoxy. I get some of the epoxy spread into one of these 8mm holes and then I can get the copper bar and get it tapped into place. I get it put in so it protrudes a very small amount both sides and then I can come back later and sand it flush. Okay, it's later on and I'm going to sand it flush. I work my way up the grits so I get a nice polished finish on the copper. The bottom of the legs are going to be braced with some copper rod, but I want something to brace the tops, so I'm going to cut down some oak. This is also going to give me something to attach the table top to. I use my downing machine to put some holes in the top of the legs and then in the ends of this brace I've cut. Now I can put everything together to have a little test fit. I'm just putting it together quickly so I can measure this distance now I need to cut down some copper rod to again about a millimetre longer than that. With that done, now I can get it all put together for real, this time with glue. I start with getting the brace with the dowels glued into the two legs and then I can get that all clamped up. When I ripped that bracing bit down, I kept the off cut which is exactly the same length and that's going to come in handy in a second. I can slide that off cut in the bottom so that the legs are parallel to each other. I can then knock up another small batch of epoxy, get it put in those 10mm holes I drilled, and then the copper rod can be slid in place. I drill some holes with a countersink bit along the centre line of this 8mm, sorry, 9mm MDF. I get some wood glue along the top of this bit of oak and then I can get the tray top in place. The actual frame is not actually attached at the moment, it's just on there to help me line everything up. Then I can get some wood screws down through the MDF into the oak. I can then get the frame taken off ready for the copper to go in place. The copper I've got is 0.9 of a mil thick. It might not sound like much, but actually it's pretty rigid. I get the protective film off and then I get a layer of contact adhesive put on. It came with a combed spreader, so that helps to get a nice even coat. I then do exactly the same on the MDF and leave both pieces for around 10 minutes to get tacky and then they can be put together. You've got to get this right the first time as it's not going to come off again 
but as it's a square bit going on a square bit, it's pretty easy to line up. With it in place, I get it flipped over, then I can get my faithful bit of railway line put on to weight it down, and a few of my clamps. So that's basically the table done. So I took some pictures, sent them to the client to get some feedback. They didn't like how deep the tray top was, so not a problem at this stage. I could take it off, run it through the table saw and trim it down a little. So when I initially quoted for this, I suggested staining it black with India ink and I thought that would look great with the contrast of the copper. So I showed the client some options. The first is Danish oil and then there's the India ink one. They thought the ink was a bit dark so this one is just with one coat of ebony stain and that is with two coats of ebony stain. I also took a bit with the India ink and sanded it down so only the bits in the grain remained. They really like this option so that's what we're going for. India ink is incredibly simple to apply. Just brush it on in the direction of the grain and it gives such a nice even coat. And one coat is more than enough. I left it overnight to make sure it fully dried and then I could sand everything down along the direction of the grain. And this produces kind of an interesting tiger stripe pattern. When I sanded the whole thing, I got on a coat of Danish oil Waited six hours, got another coat on, and that was it finished. With the oil dry, I could then permanently attach the top. So I got some glue on, got it put in place, and then all clamped up. This has been an interesting little project with some new techniques and new finishes. So it's now just got to be sent off to London and I hope the client's happy with it. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons and please subscribe for more videos.